Hi, I'm Colleen Pearl, the Cool Crone, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about the full moon in Aries. We will be giving predictions for all the signs, but there's a lot of astrology to get through, so let's get started. Hi, I hope you can hear me better now. I apologize, I didn't have my microphone on before. The full moon in Aries is happening on October 20th at 2.56 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. So be sure and Google for what time it occurs in your location on the planet. But for my purposes, it's happening on the 20th at 2.56 p.m. The October full moon is at Aries 27 degrees, 25 minutes. Now the sign of Aries is male. It's a fire sign, meaning it's fiery, it's hot. It's cardinal, which means that it starts a new season. It also means that cardinal signs are people who are starters. And it's ruled by the planet Mars, also very, very hot. The moon in Aries, or people who have moon in Aries, are leaders, they're impulsive, they're very powerful physically, and they're quick to anger. That's just a real, real shallow thumbnail of some of the characteristics of an Aries moon. But nevertheless, you cannot deny that a moon in Aries person wants to be first. They want to be out front. They are impulsive. That fiery energy makes them impulsive. So sometimes you'll find Aries starting things and not quite able to finish them because they get bored. They're good at sports. They're good at things, you know, that have to do with physical activity and they like doing it. It's a great expression of energy for them. They are quick to anger. However, they're just as quick to forgive. Now, Aries may be the slowest ones to forgive because once they get angry, um, it's easy to hurt their feelings by criticizing them about something. And when their feelings are hurt, they don't want to forgive. It's a pride thing. But if they just get angry, they are very quick to forgive you and move on and be okay. It's when their feelings get hurt that they really have a difficult time resolving that situation. The full moon in Aries is a time to really think about the needs of others and balancing your need for independence and relationship. Conflicts arise when the bald forthrightness of Aries conflicts with the softer needs of Libra, which is usually representing the partner. So I'm not saying it's always Aries and Libra in a relationship, but I'm saying astrologically when you're analyzing a relationship, relationships function on the Aries-Libra axis. And the full moon in Aries really brings this into focus. Aries usually strikes out by word or deed in the relationship. They like to take the lead. Now Libra is also a cardinal sign. They very much enjoy being a leader as well, but they don't have the aggression of Aries and they're an air sign. So they think about things a little more before taking action. Whereas Aries is impulsive fire that just acts, just does, just takes the action. And this may strike a chord in Libra and make them feel offended or defensive or just affronted by the whole thing. What Libra will do in response is to put the Aries in their place with words, with eloquence, with diplomacy, which embarrasses the Aries. And as I just said before, when they're embarrassed, they don't forgive nearly as quickly. Aries wants truth and equality, always in all things. Libra wants things to be harmonious and fair and balanced. And so we have this seesaw of desires that one has to confront during the full moon in Aries, because these are the issues that come into play. The influence of Mars and Pluto on this full moon cannot be ignored. We're going to talk about these transits in detail in a little bit. But for now, I just want to say that Mars is going to amp up the aggression and Pluto is going to amp up the intensity on this full moon. So you need to really be temperate. You need to pull yourself back during this full moon and not let yourself be super reactive because it could be damaging to any relationship that you have. 
Now, on the plus side, this full moon does give us an opportunity to reveal ourselves to our partners and to reveal vulnerability if there is already trust in the relationship. Otherwise, the Aries partner will be too strident and too bald and too strong, which may cause them to seem to prevail in the relationship, but at a high cost. And if the Libra prevails with their words and embarrasses Aries, that also is a cost to the relationship. We need to be careful in all our relationships during this full moon in Aries because you really could do some damage. Because of the intensity of this difficult energy surrounding the lunation is so high, I'm going to suggest that you all do some work on the base chakra. The base or root chakra is where we draw our survival instinct. It's breathing, it's security, it's food, it's survival. It's also represented by the color red, just like the planet Mars and the sign Aries. So it's a good chakra to be in touch with and to shore up before this full moon. If you focus on your base chakra, your root chakra, you will be more confident, you will be more secure, and this will help you when you're in the midst of whatever confrontation may come on the full moon so that you don't react too defensively or too emotionally to whatever is going on. You're gonna be confident, and that's always going to make you be a little bit more reserved in your reactions to things. So let's talk about what the full moon actually is good for. Every full moon is a good time for looking at unresolved issues, letting go of negative patterns and toxic thoughts, releasing the wasted emotions, which are guilt, fear, jealousy, and disappointment. But it's a culmination of energy that could have been building since the previous full moon or since the previous new moon. Whenever you put something into motion and the energy starts to build, it's gonna build up towards this point of the full moon. It is also a culmination of yin and yang energy. So your receptive and your assertive energies will be at a peak. And this is what causes people to feel a little loony during the full moon because they've got these competing energies going on and they don't quite know how to handle it all the time. However, this full moon is different. It's an important full moon. It's got some very strong planetary energies influencing it. And when I say it's gonna shine a light on darkness in your soul, I mean it. Let's move on to some of the other influences that are happening for this full moon. The retrograde planets. Now, for our retrograde planets right now for this full moon, we just have Neptune, Chiron, and Uranus. Now, Chiron is retrograde about half of the year, usually. So we're not gonna feel this Chiron retrograde energy so severely as we are some of the bigger planets. Neptune, that's a big planet and it's been retrograde since June 25th, but it's stationing direct now. It's at about 20 degrees of Pisces and whenever a big planet like this just hovers around a certain degree, it's pretty much at station. It's not gonna actually turn direct until December 1st, but we are feeling, remember the analogy like a train coming into the station. We are feeling this very, very large body, this planet really just kind of slowed down almost to a standstill. And this causes the energy of Neptune to really intensify. So we've got Neptune being very intense. Um, and then once it releases and begins to move forward on December 1st, we, some of that intensity will begin to abate. And then we've got Uranus, which went retrograde on August 19th and will resume uh, direct motion in January of 2022. So Uranus is retrograde. It hasn't really slowed to that point yet where we're feeling this intensity. 
Remember, Uranus has been going in and out of square with Saturn since December 2020. I'll be doing another video about the final exact square taking place in December of this year, so be sure to watch that video as well. And at that time, we will talk a lot more about Uranus in retrograde. Now, something else I want to remind you about concerning retrograde planets is Jupiter and Mercury. Mercury went direct on October 18th, or is going direct, depending on when you're watching this video, on October 18th, and so is Jupiter. So both Jupiter and the tiny Mercury are stationing on October 18th. And remember, that means an intensity of energy. So in addition to your meditation on the root chakra, I also want you to meditate on the energies of Mercury and Jupiter. Mercury being communications of all kinds and our thought processes, things that you do with your hands and small appliances. Jupiter being luck, large sums of money, parties, joyousness, buoyancy, expansion, love, higher learning, philosophy, the mysteries, all those Jupiter things. So I want you to focus on those in your meditations in anticipation of the full moon so that you can understand what you need to ask for or change or work on at the time of the full moon. One of the things that's always difficult at a full moon is that we're always saying, let go, do your shadow work, do this, do that. But sometimes you don't know what it is you're supposed to be working on. Work that you do at the time of the new and the full moons is an ongoing process. You know there's going to be another lunation in a couple of weeks, so it's not like you have to do everything at once. Or maybe you want to pick the full moons in the earth signs to work on certain things, and the new moons on in the air signs to work on certain things, and so you would plot that out for the year. It's not like you finish, is my point. It's a journey. It doesn't matter who gets there first. It matters that you feel good. It matters that you love yourself enough to work on things that hold you back from all the happiness that you're entitled to and that you deserve. So working on these lunations, I think is really, really important for everybody to do all the time, but nobody's keeping score. Nobody's standing over your shoulder and saying you did a good or a bad job working on that full or new moon. It's all just up to you. It's very personal work. I take it very seriously, all the things that I tell you about these full moons. I hope they help. And you'll let me know in the comments if they do or if they don't. We also have Mars standing next to the sun. And that means that the moon is opposing Mars. In addition, Pluto is at a square angle to both of these bodies. And it's exact, it's at 27 degrees. So, that's very intense. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Both the Sun and Mars are very, very hot. And this means that there will be a lot of intense, hot energy coming forward at the time of this full moon. And this energy needs to be dispersed. So you need to work on what you're gonna do with all of this hot energy. Obviously, if you're a fire sign, you know what you need to do. You need to like dance for two hours or run around the block or play a game of basketball. You need to do something really physically exerting. If you're not a fire sign or if you're just not that kind of physical person and you want to do something a little more in your head, you know, do an artistic project. Do something where your expression needs to come out, but you're going to do it alone solo projects, that's what this is about. The physical activity should be done probably with a group, but if you can do something by yourself, that's even better. Or even just a really hard, challenging mental work project could be done solo. That's really gonna help dissipate that energy and get it out of your body before the full moon. Now, if you do have to interact with others, try to be aware of their feelings and needs. Just remember that this is about relationship, Aries, Libra, Axis. So it's not just you and your needs. It's also the needs and desires of your partner, of your friend, of your lover, of your business partner, whoever. Now, the sun is also square Pluto, right? And we're gonna talk about the moon in a minute. 
when the sun is square Pluto, this is a period where things can come to a crisis point. <sighs> Mars squaring Pluto. Mars is aggression. Pluto is sometimes death. So Pluto and Mars are in a square arrangement, which offers up a, a challenge to those energies. So will this be your emotional reaction to the challenge? Will this be your very measured response to the challenge? There's a big difference there. So if you've already dispersed that hot energy, you probably will have a more balanced reaction to the Mars-Pluto square energy. Your ego, which is the sun, your identity, which is the sun, and your life goals, which is the sun, are going to be at stake. So be prepared. Master your t integrity now. Don't let yourself fly off the handle. Mars and Pluto are going to be pushing your buttons. They're going to be pushing you to be angry and volatile. Don't give in to that. You do not have to kill or be killed. You can avoid this violent, hot, difficult energy. One thing that's really going to help you is the meditation on the chakras and on Jupiter and Mercury. You need to know your own weaknesses. You need to know what your flaws are. And you need to know that you're going to be working on these during the full moon. If you focus on the flaws or the weakness or the whatever of the other person, you're kind of missing the point. You want to be aware of their needs and you want to try to be kind and, and cooperative and di diplomatic in your discussions with them. But you have to take care of your own energy. You can only control your own energy, not anybody else's. The organizations that are going to be dismantled with this are organizations that you may be connected to. So Pluto is looking at weaknesses, flaws, and corruption and trying to dismantle that in an effort to give you space to create a new organization or entity that will be strong and take you into the future and be non-corrupt, be upright, and, and to represent your own integrity and values. Now let's talk about the moon square Pluto. So the moon square Pluto, the moon's emotionality here does you no favors. Coupled with Mars and the sun, there's too much power and this hot, hot energy really needs to be dispersed. This is where there's gonna be power conflicts, definitely a lot of stress and a possibility of violence. And the moon are your deep, deep feelings and reactions to things which is when people lash out, when they have negative reactions to things. So be careful. So as I said, the sun is your legacy, your heart, your will. Pluto is death and destruction and transformation. So whatever it tears down, yes, there's an opportunity for it to be rebuilt. However, with Mars and moon in opposition, you're still gonna have just a lot of conflicting emotions going on and you don't wanna let them explode. So it's so important that you dispel that hot energy between the sun and Mars before the moon's reaction to it can cause you to do something that you may regret. Another word that comes to mind when we're talking about Pluto and the moon is abuse. So this is also a recipe for people to be abused for people in authority to overcome people without authority, for people who can dominate others to dominate and abuse them. So I, I cannot stress enough that there are powers that are going out over this full moon that could be very detrimental for a lot of people. And if people can keep their heads and be calm and think before they act, it'll be a lot nicer full moon, but I, I fear that that probably won't happen. In addition, we have Mercury trining Black Moon Lilith. So this means that some of the deep and hidden secrets in our lives may be revealed. Mercury wants to talk about things and you may find in the course of discussion that you reveal to yourself or to others something about some hidden emotions that you really wanted to discover that you really wanted to reveal. Pluto will demand that this hidden thing 
be tested or destroyed if it's not strong enough. The Sun, Moon, and Mars can also give you energy to manifest a transformation of sorts using Pluto's energy. So that's a positive use of that information. But if I put on my Pollyanna rose-colored glasses, what I can say is that this event, whatever happens, could open us up to an amazing transformation, which, yes, will cause something to leave or be destroyed or die, but allow for something better to be built up in its place. And that's a blessing. That's, that's a good thing. Now let's go on to the fire signs and talk about how the planetary placements and the full moon are going to affect each sign. We'll start with Aries because it is an Aries full moon. This is your full moon. This is where you're going to start to make big plans for the upcoming months or maybe even the upcoming year. That's what I do with my full moon. I usually use it to plan out my year. Um, and this would mean that with the moon in your first house, you want to change the way the world looks at you, the way you present yourself to the world. You're in opposition to the sun and Mars in your seventh house. So for you, all this talk about relationship is very, very relevant. You want to be careful that your partner is not getting too overheated and that your partner is not being overly aggressive. So you might want to share this video with your partner. Make sure that they understand that they can be very harmful to you during this full moon, that they should do the meditations that I'm talking about and take into account your feelings and desires at the time of this full moon. And you need to do that as well, Aries Rising. Now, Pluto will be in your 10th house, which means that the sacrifice or the transformation has something to do with your career. It will also be connected to something having to do with your relationship or relationships. Relationships in the seventh house are not just spouses or people you live with or romantic partners. It can also be deep friendships, long, long-term friendships, and also business partnerships. And very often we ignore that. So let's look at that. If there's a business partnership at stake here, then you want to be very careful on this full moon not to damage it by being too obsessive about your own point of view. Pluto is obsession. Before it kills something, it obsesses over it. So there will be a sacrifice made in the name of your career. Something could die in the name of your career. It doesn't mean a physical death necessarily, although Pluto does indicate physical death as well. So you want to be most careful with your relationships and make sure that you don't hurt somebody's feelings. But also if you're in a partnership, Aries rising, you want to make sure that you explain to your partner that they could also be very harmful to you. Now let's go on to Leo. Leo, for you, the full moon is happening in your ninth house. You are dreaming and thinking and wishing for things that are beyond your normal community. You're thinking about foreign travel. You're thinking about writing and publishing books. You're thinking about higher learning. You're thinking about the higher mysteries and philosophical issues in life. So you may be really branching out as far as what you want to study and work on in your life. And your partner is focusing more on the day to day and what's happening in your neighborhood, with your job, with your commute, with your brothers and sisters, with your neighbors. The energy in that area of your life is where that hot, hot energy from Mars and the sun is culminating at the time of the full moon. So you may find that there's issue with your neighbors or with your brothers and sisters or there could be something from your childhood coming forward that you need to revisit. Pluto is going to be squaring both of those configurations in Capricorn in your sixth house and this has to do with work. So whereas the third house may be your commute to work, the sixth house is the job itself and your relationship with people on the job and this is where we will have a sacrifice of some kind. So Pluto is going to cause you to sacrifice either a person or yourself. It doesn't necessarily mean that somebody on your job is going to die, although it could mean that. It does mean that there will be a sacrifice of some kind. 
So either you give something up on the job or something is taken from you, um, but it will help to transform your working conditions and possibly your relationships with your coworkers. Let's look at Sagittarius. Sagittarius has the moon in the fifth house, which means that their emotional outlook and their emotional focus for this full moon is going to be surrounding children, creativity, games of chance, sports, pleasurable things, things that are fun. So for you, Sag, as I said, expelling that hot energy with physical activities is going to be really important. And that's probably what you'll do, Sag, because most of the Sagittarians I know are very, very physically active. The Sun and Mars are in your 11th house for hopes, dreams, wishes, and groups that you're a part of. And so you're going to find that groups have a big impact on your physical ability to express. And you may have started a running club. You may have started a yoga club. You may, you may be the head of some kind of an organization that hikes every weekend. That's great. And that activity would serve you well right before this full moon. I wouldn't do it on the full moon though. Pluto is in your second house. This is the house for streams of income, also your talents and your skills. Be careful here. It does not mean that you're gonna lose your job. It does mean that your streams of income have been changing for quite some time and this full moon may just be the catalyst to really say, okay, no more of that other way of doing things. This is the way you're gonna do things now. There is a transformative or sacrificial quality to this full moon for you as it relates to your stream of income. So you want to take a look at that and maybe be on the lookout for ways that you can more easily make that transition. All right, let's move on to the air signs and the first air sign up is Gemini. Gemini, this full moon, the moon is happening in Aries in your 11th house for hopes, dreams, and wishes, and also groups that you're a part of. The sun and Mars are in Libra in your fifth house, and this has to do with children, games of chance, creativity, and sports. Your desires are to have some fun group activity, but Sun and Mars are saying that you should be doing things by yourself. So I will strongly, strongly encourage you, Gemini, to uh, take a solo run or, or dance for three hours or do something that you can possibly do by yourself to expend that hot energy. And then when you come back to the group and your friends in the group, you won't be so hot headed and you won't start arguments. Pluto is in square to both the sun and the moon and Mars. And so this is where the sacrifice is going to come in. So the eighth house has to do with metaphysical topics, taboo topics, things that are hidden, sex, death, taxes, inheritances, um, loans, mortgages, big money, joint, joint finances. So somewhere in that little uh, world of the eighth house, there's going to be a sacrifice made. And this does not mean that you're going to, you know, lose your 401k or something, but it does mean that at some point in this full moon, you're going to find out about some really intense thing having to do with probably joint, joint resources that has to be dealt with. I'm not saying that you're going to lose everything and I'm not saying that somebody's going to die because Pluto in the eighth house, while it can indicate death in the way that it's presenting to me, I'm not seeing death. Okay, Gemini, so I'm not saying that there's going to be a death of any kind by having Pluto in the eighth house. It is the house for death and Pluto does represent death. But what I'm seeing from this is that you're going to make a sacrifice having to do with something pertaining to joint resources or something to do with sex, death, taxes, or hidden things, or metaphysical things, or taboo subjects. So that's what I'm going to say about that for this full moon, Gemini. I just don't think it's going to be for you as profound as it is for some other signs. Now let's go on to Libra. Libra, this full moon will impact you quite a bit. You're a cardinal sign. The moon is in your seventh house for your partner, so your partner is going to be more vulnerable on this full moon than you are. The sun and Mars is in your first house, giving you a lot of energy, a lot of energy. All of that hot, hot, hot fire energy is in your first house. So, you know, this would be a good time for you to figure out a way to let off some of that heat 
to get it out of your system so that you're not quite so argumentative and ready to pick a fight. Pluto is in your fourth house. Now, Pluto in the transiting the fourth house, you've experienced this for many years now, but Pluto going in the fourth house could mean some sort of destruction of part of your home or all of your home. It could mean uh, the death of somebody that normally lives with you. It could be a transformation of sorts of the home or of what you think of as home and your family. Fourth house is also family in addition to just the home and the real estate of the home. So there could be a real transformation in how you look at the family structure. All of those things may be possible, Libra. Um, I don't want to predict anything really dire and negative in these videos, but you should take a look at it. And then we come to Aquarius. Aquarius, this full moon, the moon is actually in your third house for everyday transactions, childhood education, the commute to work, your everyday money, your siblings, and your neighborhood. The sun and Mars are opposite the sky in your ninth house where we are talking about foreign places, different cultures, different languages, different religions, different philosophies, things that are foreign to you in that way, higher learning, the publishing industry. So you may be thinking very clearly about starting a project in any one of those areas, such as writing a book to be published or teaching a course or traveling abroad or all of these things may be coming to mind uh, during this full moon. In now, Pluto in the 12th house, that's where the sacrifice is going to come in. So if you've been contemplating things in your subconscious or trying to do shadow work or trying to look at things that are holding you back, this is a great full moon for you to really focus on that. Pluto is going to make you completely obsessive about all of those things. So you want to be a little bit careful with this Aquarius. You don't want to get into discussions with people where it's, you know, my way or the highway. You're a fixed sign. You're very, very adamant when you get into argument mode. So I want you to be very careful at this full moon in particular because of all the Mars energy. Um, I just don't want you to ruin a relationship just because you had to get the last word. That. So just be careful Aquarius. Realize that the 12th house sacrifice is one that you are going to have to make and that could uh, come in a number of flavors. It could be you being really obsessed about your dreams um, and it could be also something coming up from the subconscious. So think about all those things Aquarius. It's going to be an awesome full moon but intense. You may like it. You may like the intensity but it's still it's going to be difficult for most people. And now on to the water signs. Our first water sign is Cancer. So Cancer, the moon for you is in Aries in the 10th house. So this means that you're going to be fairly emotional about your career. The sun and Mars are going to be in your fourth house, which has to do with the house you live in, the family structure and the real estate that the house is on. Looking at Mars and Sun together, you're going to have a lot of energy to expend having to do with the family structure and the home that you live in or the real estate that it's on. So if you are actually in the real estate business, I would say that this would be a very, very busy period for you and one in which you could really get a lot done by yourself. So all of that activity that you are engaged in, make sure that it's solo activity. If not, if you do have to deal with others, then by all means, take my advice and get a lot of physical activity done before the full moon so that you're almost exhausted when the full moon hits. Because Cancer, you're especially vulnerable and sensitive to the full moon every month. So you want to make sure that you don't have pent up hot energy to expend so that you just start yelling at people you don't want you don't want to do that you're already a very emotional person and you're already experiencing a moon that is if you're a cancer rising it's squaring your rising sign right there too making almost a grand cross in your charts so with pluto squaring the sun and the moon we have some stressful stressful energy cancer Pluto demands the sacrifice and the sacrifice is in the house for partnerships. So this is either a sacrifice having to do with a, a romantic partner, a business partner, or a deep, deep friendship. 
this is tricky cancer so you want to watch your words you want to make sure that the demise of this whatever sacrifice is going to happen in your relationship even if it does mean the end of a relationship you want to make sure that the last thing you say to that partner is not something hurtful you want to make sure that you're as loving as possible and you know best of all worlds we hope that the relationship does not come to an end just because of careless heated words but Pluto is transformation. So there is also the possibility that the way the relationship is structured could end, but the relationship itself could be transformed into something new and even stronger. Whatever survives the Pluto decimation is so much stronger in the end. It's really, it's a blessing, but it's hard to pull off because Pluto is really, really obsessive. So this could mean that at this time, your partner has been obsessive for years and it's really taking a toll. Or it could be that your partner is trying to get you to do something that the two of you really need to accomplish. So either way, there is gonna be something that really changes dramatically about your relationship at the time of this full moon. It's an exact square, it's an exact T-square, and if it's opposing your rising sign and your rising sign is near, uh, I would say from the mid to the end of Cancer, then you're gonna feel this full moon tremendously. And definitely there's, you're gonna, you're gonna hit that crisis point and you're gonna deal with it. And it could be good. I mean, usually it is whatever Pluto destroys is usually for the best, but the transformation and the healing and the putting things back together is usually a little bit painful. But you can do it, Cancer, and, it, and keep in mind, this is all for the best. The next sign up is Scorpio. Now, Scorpio, you've got the moon in the sixth house opposing Mars and Sun in the twelfth house, and anything having to do with the twelfth and eighth houses, even the ninth house for you, Scorpio, you just get giddy. I can just see you going like this, you know, you're just excited about it. Now, Sun and Mars. Mars is your traditional ruling planet. So is this a good aspect for you? Yes, it is. It's a fantastic full moon for you. It's almost like getting a second Scorpio full moon. You've got the moon in your sixth house. You know that you're going to be very emotional concerning your work or people you work with. And you know that your energy is really going to be focusing on secrets, the subconscious, dreams, things that are hidden and forgotten and tucked away. Scorpio, you're all about the secrets. And so this is going to be a fun full moon for you, but be careful. It's all squaring Pluto. Now, Pluto is your modern ruler. So you may think that you're going to like this energy, but trust me, you're not going to love this energy. It's going to be rough. It's going to be hard energy for everybody. And for you, the sacrifice is going to come in your third house. So this has to do with brothers and sisters. It has to do with your neighborhood, your commute to work, the, the everyday transactions that you make minor transactions as some people call them so how are you going to deal with this you're going to expel that hot energy before the full moon you're going to meditate on your root chakra probably your favorite chakra you're going to look and do a meditation on mercury and jupiter and see what it is that you need to ask for or let go of in this full moon and you're going to do a little ritual for yourself at the full moon to actually implement that doing all of those things Scorpio is still not going to distract you from your real goal, which is to find out every single secret that you can, probably about all the men, all the males in your life, because Sun and Mars are both male. So be careful, Scorpio. I'm even going to tell you to be careful. This is a difficult full moon for everybody, and you're no exception. And the final water sign is Pisces rising. Got the full moon in the second house, which is your house for income streams, and the Sun and Mars in your eighth house which means that there's going to be a lot of activity and uh, attention expelled concerning joint resources or sex, death, taxes, inheritance, the occult, taboo subjects, metaphysical things. So you could be really, really focusing on all of those eighth house topics and reacting with ways of, you know, well, I can make money doing this, even if I change of income or financial security in this other area, which is eighth house is your financial security. I can still make money in other ways. You may be doing several different streams of income at the same time. However, we have the square to Pluto. The square to Pluto, Pluto is in the house for, for uh, hope, dreams, and wishes and groups that you're a part of. So 
you could find that there the sacrifice comes from somebody in the group leaves somebody really key it could even be a death of somebody in that group but it impacts you profoundly pluto is obsession and it's intensity so you're very very obsessed or intense about this group it means a lot to you so maybe this means that now you have to step up and become a leader in the group i don't know but pluto is a sacrifice something's going to be sacrificed in that 11th house arena and you're going to be dealing with your um, finances both your income stream and also investments and now on to earth signs And the first earth sign up is Taurus. So Taurus, this moon is in your 12th house. So you're really, really thinking about dreams. You're getting a lot of dreams and you're focusing on your subconscious. So this full moon is going to be a golden opportunity for you with that influence from Mercury trine Lilith and also with all the other planetary arrangements. You're really going to have a great opportunity to dig into your subconscious motivations to emotions that are hidden, to traumas that are hidden, to things, secrets that you're finding out about yourself and being able to work on them on this full moon in order to get rid of those wasted emotions, fear, jealousy, disappointment. You're going to be looking at people you work with and it's probably going to focus on male people that you work with and your relationships with them. You could have a coming and going of people in your workplace. You could have somebody who leaves, somebody who comes, but nevertheless, take my advice about the hot energy. Make sure that you don't start an argument with somebody from work. You may some, say something to them that's very uh, harmful and, and really hurts, really cuts somebody, and you don't wanna do that, Taurus. I'm sure you don't wanna do that. The hot energy at work also means that you're going to be doing a lot of things at work by yourself, a lot of difficult work, a lot of uh, solo projects. And the solo projects are good for this full moon. But then we have Pluto. And in this instance, I'm going to say that Pluto is also representing an authority figure, somebody really obsessed with whatever it is that you're doing at work. So here we have the Pluto energy that is really conflicting with what you're trying to get done at the on the job and also with what you're dreaming about and thinking about with the moon in the 12th house. So the sacrifice is going to come from your philosophy. It's going to come from possibly um, a point of view having to do with religion or foreign cultures, something that's kind of outside your normal realm that you have to deal with. So the, the sacrifice has to do with something about ninth house matters, foreign travel, the higher mysteries, it's religions other than the religion you were raised in, it's ph philosophical thought, it's higher learning, it's the publishing industry, it's the legal industry. So any of those things could promote a sacrifice and it could affect you in your work, but also in your subconscious and your health. With Mars and the Sun in the sixth house, I should, I should really make sure that I say, don't do any surgeries at this time. Please wait until Mars is out of your sixth house. The result, if you go ahead with surgeries, is usually there's profuse bleeding. Um, so you, want to, you don't want that after surgery because it doesn't, it doesn't make for great recovery. And just make sure that you're con you're considering the needs of others. That relationships, Libra, Aries, access is all important during this full moon. And the next earth sign is Virgo. Virgo, the moon for you is in the eighth house, which means that you're going to be thinking about joint resources and ways to use it, ways to change it. Also, the Sun and Mars are in your second house, with ha which has to do with your stream of income. So for you, you're going to be working very hard at generating new streams of income by yourself, 
things that are solo, not with your partner. But your partnership is very much going to be in focus when it comes to financial security. You will definitely be working on shoring up financial security. Now, Virgo, be careful. Don't start playing the blame game with your partner and accusing them of not holding up their end or, or of spending too much money or something like that. You want to be careful with that and make sure, like everybody else, expend that hot energy prior to the full moon and also for you prior to having any conversations about your joint finances. Pluto is squaring all of this, coming from the fifth house. The fifth house has to do with children, creativity, uh, games of chance, sports, things like that. So there could be a sacrifice made in that area. It could be that you're having to change up your investment plan due to your kids. You know, your kids need college savings accounts or whatever. So that could be a source of the sacrifice. Is something to do with your children or something to do with sports or games of chance and and uh, creativity and games of chance include by the way the stock market so please be careful with that <laughs> we don't want to sacrifice there and then we have capricorn rising capricorn the moon in aries falls in your fourth house that has to do with the family structure the home that you live in and also the real estate that the home is on and it's opposing the sun and mars in your 10th house having to do with your career so Capricorn, I would say that at this time with Pluto in your first house and the Sun and Mars in your 10th house, your career should really be soaring and you should be really taking the lead. You should be um, shining bright and everybody will know that you're the leader, you're the person and that Pluto is giving you a little bit of obsessiveness. It's been there in that first house for a few years, but it's giving you that obsessiveness to feel like you really deserve all the light being shown on you not necessarily accolades that's not what I'm getting from this but that you want to be known for something this is your legacy of who you really are and who you will be what you will be known for the sacrifice so what will the sacrifice be well Capricorn you've had Pluto in the first house for a very long time but you have not had um, you know Mars squaring it all the time there have been squares but this is a full moon with a square so this is going to instigate some sort of a sacrifice. Will it be you? Will you be sacrificed or will something about your career be sacrificed? It's a toss up. So just be careful there. If it's something that you can negotiate without having to destroy your career, without having to lose much in your career, it could be that you're just going through a very slow metamorphosis of your brand and how you present yourself to the world and that this full moon is really going to put a capper on part of that transformation. After all, Pluto is very late in Capricorn. You don't have very many more degrees left of Capricorn for it to do its work. So let's hope that that's what the sacrifice really is all about. Okay, that's all the 12 signs. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you will join me for my other video about the astrology between October 20th and November 4th. I hope you enjoyed all the other videos that I've put out. I will be putting out a video about Uranus Saturn Square that becomes exact in December. And in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.